You can access money out of an IUL the sad way, the dumb way, or the smart way. So in this educational episode, uh, I'm going to uh, address the question, what are the differences of the three ways that you can access money out of an IUL policy? Uh, What do you mean, Doug, by the sad way versus the dumb way versus the smart way? Get ready, I'm gonna give you insights that a lot of people don't understand, even insurance agents. So I'm Doug Andrew, and what do I know? Well, uh, I've been a financial strategist and retirement planning specialist now for five decades helping people optimize assets and minimize taxes and empower their authentic wealth. My favorite financial vehicle, bar none, if you read any of my books or watch very many of these YouTube videos, is a max-funded indexed universal life insurance policy, but it must be structured correctly and funded properly. If it is, then it can perform like an incredible uh, tax-free cash cow, and it's what I uh, call a laser fund, okay, which is the title of my 11th book. I want to gift you a copy of this at the end of the episode, so stay with me. And uh, so when it's structured correctly and funded properly, it is a superior capital accumulation tool for all kinds of goals, uh, usually like retirement. It knocks the socks off of IRAs and 401ks, but you can use it for college funding. It knocks the socks off of a 529 college savings plan. It's way more flexible. Uh, Working capital for business. Many savvy business owners use this for their working capital. Many savvy real estate investors use this uh, to be able to accumulate their money while they're buying and selling properties. And they don't send extra principal payments to the mortgage company. They put it into an IUL and it will compound and grow to a, a bigger sum to pay off their mortgages, if that's their goal, two and a half years faster than giving it to the mortgage company. Uh, it, it's an excellent tool for pension maximization if you're a school teacher, a police officer, firefighter. Uh, it's, it's better than having an emergency fund in a bank or credit union. This is where banks and credit unions will take your money and put it. So just bypass the middleman. Uh, good for lump sums, capital transfer, for settlements, uh, to reposition assets like money out of IRAs or 401ks, doing strategic rollouts. It's like a financial Swiss army knife. So uh, people say, well, okay, Doug. Uh, so I put in you know, my money. And I've had many clients who will put in, you know, 10,000 a year, 100,000 a year, 200,000 a year. I just met with a young man and this morning, he's uh, 38. He's put in 400,000 a year. He's got a nice business. Uh, I've had some people put in 2 million a year. It, it, it doesn't matter what you begin with, it's what you end up with. So let's, let's uh, fast forward to um, uh, where you end up. So let's say you started out uh, and you started socking away 100,000 a year and you maximum funded in five years, you, you put in 500 grand. And um, in seven and a half years, that 500,000 doubled to a million, which has happened for many of our clients. And so now you have a million. So whatever it is, every million you have in your insurance policy, I often say on this channel, uh, you can uh, get a, a 10% payout uh, for as long as you live based on actual historical performance. And if you understand how that works, you're using an index loan, you're taking it out the smart way, you're not taking it out the dumb way. So let's explain the differences because if you have, let's say a million dollars in the policy and that's your cash value, uh, usually at that point in time, if you structure it correctly, uh, the death benefit uh, equals the cash value. Your cash value has now grown to equal or exceed the death benefit. So the cost of the insurance now is next to nothing uh, because your cash value uh, now has grown to equal the death benefit. If you happen to die, the insurance company is going to pay out 5% more, but they're only charging you for, for a dinky amount of insurance and the interest you're earning on a million dwarfs the cost of the insurance. That's why a properly structured IUL gets cheaper as you get older. A lot of agents don't know how to do this. So I've got a million bucks in there. Now, uh, if you understand index universal life, when I say this, people go, how can they do that? How can an insurance company 
uh, on their general account portfolio, where they have their billions or trillions of dollars invested in AAA and AA bonds and mortgages on skyscrapers and shopping malls and so forth. And so on all of this general account portfolio, uh, maybe they're earning, you know, 6%. They need one of those percentage points for themselves, and so they're they're only uh, able to pay you five, okay? So that's called the general account portfolio rate. From 2000 to 2010 or 12, uh, the general account portfolio rate was a net of five. Uh, Then interest rates went down, 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 and so the general account portfolio rate from 2012 to 2022 has been maybe around four. Now it's going back up again because interest rates are going up. Back in 1980 to 1992, the general account portfolio rates were 11 and three quarters to 15 and a half percent net. Well, whatever it is, this interest rates are relative, by the way. So when interest rates are high for borrowing, they're high for earning. But let's uh, go back to this example. We have an insurance company and let's say the general account portfolio rate is five, just to keep it simple. Now, uh, people ask me, Doug, how can an insurance company earning on their portfolio, 5%, afford to pay you 8%. Now, if you don't understand that, you don't understand indexing. Because with an indexed universal life, on the million you have there, you're telling the insurance company, if you're bullish about America uh, in any given year, which most years, seven out of 10 years, uh, the economy is going up, uh, you're saying, don't invest my million in the market but take that 5% general account portfolio, that 5% interest on my million, and you can do whatever you need to do with that to have the wherewithal to pay me whatever the S&P or whatever index I choose that you offer. So you have the wherewithal to pay me what it does if it goes up. But if it goes down, if I guess wrong and the market crashes 10, 20, 30, 40%, I don't wanna lose. Uh, I want my million still. Because if you had your million in the S&P, in 2008, you would have lost uh, 400 grand. It would have gone down to 600,000. Our clients didn't lose a dime in 2008 because uh, their million was still safe in the insurance company. They didn't make anything, but they didn't lose because the 5%, the 50,000, those options just expired worthless, but they didn't lose their million. And so you do that because most years it's gonna go up. 70% of the time it goes up, uh, 30% it goes down, from 2000 to 2010, there were actually five down years and our clients still doubled their money. A million doubled to two million when most Americans weren't even back to break even at the end of 2010. That's why you use indexing. So uh, I just explained how uh, you can earn a better rate of return because if you're willing to not demand that the insurance company keep crediting you 5% each year, you're saying, no, I'll give up the 5% so that you can pay me when the market goes up but if the market goes down, that's a no-brainer. They buy upside options. They're the number one purchaser of options in the world. So I've always earned a rate of return of of about 3% higher than the general account portfolio rate uh, by using indexing, but that's if I do not rebalance or diversify. Uh, Most of the time, uh, my clients, we put them 25% into a one-year point-to-point, maybe with a 9% cap another 25% in a two year, another uh, 25% in a five year, Uh, maybe another 25% in a one year point to point with no cap. We just diversify and we rebalance every year. That's what takes the rate of return, frankly, up to more like 11.17%. But uh, also when they're ready to take out the money, they take it out the smart way. So let me tell you uh, just a simple example. Let's say an insurance company uh, is only crediting you eight on the index because you're not diversifying and doing what I just said. So <clears throat> they're earning five, but they're giving you eight because you're using indexing, but you're not diversifying and rebalancing. But you can pull out 10%, 100 grand, 10% payout out of a million dollar nest egg and not deplete the principal even though it's only earning eight. Now I say that to most people. How uh, can you pull out 10%, 100 grand a year out of a million dollar nest egg if the insurance company is only crediting you eight? That's by doing it the smart way. Do you wanna know how? Okay, let's go through the sad, dumb, and smart. 
if uh, I have a million dollars in there and I die, it's going to leave behind, it's going to blossom. Now, if I'm self-insured uh, and, and my cash value equals the death benefit, uh, if I happen to die, that's the sad way. Uh, but it, it blossoms instantly. It may only blossom uh, 5% up to a million one. Uh, earlier, when I put in 500,000, if I die, it pays out a million. I didn't do it for the death benefit, but that's the sad way. Uh, it's one heck of a return, but I don't recommend it. So that's the sad way by dying. The dumb way is um, with universal life, you can actually, uh, under the Internal Revenue Code, access your money uh, without paying tax until you've recovered your basis. Most investments are taxed LIFO. So like an annuity, if I put $500,000 into an annuity, and if it was earning, let's say 10%, and I start pulling out 50 grand a year, I have to pay tax on that 50,000 every year because that's the last money I'm earning. The interest is the first money coming out. Only if I gouge, get into the principal uh, and start lowering that, is that portion tax-free. And so that's LIFO. With insurance, you get treated FIFO. So the first money in is the first money out. If I put $500,000 into an IUL policy, and uh, if it grows to a, a million, and I start pulling out a hundred grand a year, uh, then the first five years it's tax-free because it took me five years to get my basis recovered. A uh, hundred thousand times five years is 500 grand, which is the basis I put in. That is tax-free because the first money in is the first money out. But that's dumb because after that, if I keep pulling out a hundred grand, I have to pay tax. Now, a, a good insurance company will say, hold on, that's dumb. Don't, don't do that. The IRS says, that's dumb. Uh, you don't have to pay tax if you simply change the nomenclature. Uh, call it a loan. Borrow your money out. And people go, borrow? I have to borrow my own money? And they're going to charge me interest. No, here we go. When you do it the smart way, that's by borrowing. There's two ways to borrow. If I have a million in there, and if I start uh, borrowing, I could borrow 900,000 out of there, but let's say we just wanna uh, borrow the equivalent of our interest. Now, uh, if I'm only earning 8%, I can borrow out, let's say 80,000 a year, and uh, then I can use a zero wash loan. So what happens is uh, I have a million in there and I borrow out 80, so they carve out 80,000, which is the interest that I'm earning, and that's the collateral for the loan. And so uh, they charge me 4% on 80,000, but they credit me 4% on that 80,000 of collateral. But the remaining, okay, 920,000 is earning whatever the index does. And so you can sit there and borrow for years, and this is, is accruing at 4%, but this one is also accruing at 4%. It's a zero wash. At the end of the day, when you die, uh, th this one, equals that one, it washes away when you die and your family gets what's left over, which is tax-free. So it's a zero wash loan. But the problem with that is, is that uh, you're only getting eight. What's the real smart way? Uh, an alternate loan, an index loan, uh, a variable loan. So we'll call it an index loan. This is the smart way because I can tell the insurance company, I want my whole million to always be growing at the indexed rate. And I want it to collateralize the loan, but I'm willing to pay a little bit higher interest. I'm willing to pay 1% uh, higher, 5%, uh, but I want uh, the entire balance, the entire million, I don't want you to carve out a piece and credit me whatever you're charging. I want, to, you can charge me 5% on the loan balance, the 100 grand this year, but I want to have you credit me on the entire million. Well, some years, maybe it's zero, but most years uh, it's gonna be, you know, uh, averaging 11%, netting 10. So far, so good. So if you're gonna average 10, you're borrowing at five and you're earning 10. How much more is 10 than five? Is this starting to make sense? It's 100% more you're making 100% rates of return. But I have clients who have borrowed on their IUL for retirement or business purposes, and they borrow money at 5%.
uh, on a million bucks, the insurance company charges 50,000 and they credited them that one year, 25%, 250,000. How much more is, is 250 than 50? It's five times, it's 500% more. So going back to the beginning, uh, you can access money out of an IUL uh, uh, that, uh, the, the, the smart way, and you could be earning, golly, 100% to 500% more, but that's the smart way. Why? Because of that spread. Conservatively, uh, because the spread is usually 2% higher historically than the cost, if you borrow at five, the chance that you'll be credited seven is almost like a given. That allows you to be able to pull out 2% more than what the interest crediting, the index crediting rate is. Are you getting it? So if, you're, if the insurance company is only crediting you eight and you're pulling out 10, but you're doing it with an index loan, you're able to pull out 2% more without depleting your million dollar nest egg in the example I've been giving, because you're pulling it out the smart way. Now, your eyes might be glazed over right now. If you don't understand this, you're gonna miss out because we have clients who uh, take it out the smart way. And if every million dollars they have, they know very predictably that they can generate a 10% payout, $100,000 a year tax-free, even if the index crediting rate is only five, six, seven, or eight. And now you know how an insurance company only earning 5% on their general account portfolio can afford to pay you seven or eight by linking to an index. But now you know how if they only earn 8% or credit you eight, you can pull out 10 without depleting principal by using that arbitrage or spread by continuing to earn a rate of return greater than the net cost of borrowing against the cash value. Is it making sense? If you want to learn more, study it in this book, especially on this uh, left brain side, it's chapter uh, seven and eight. And so uh, this is actually two books in one. It's been flying off of our warehouse shelves. A properly structured index universal life is deemed a laser fund. And so uh, this book uh, is actually two because this side is the left brain side, about 200 pages, 14 chapters that gives you all the charts and graphs and explanations of detail. If you learn more by stories, examples, you flip it over, this is about 100 pages, 12 chapters, with 62 actual client stories. You'll see examples in here of actual index loans that I've been talking about. And when you really study it, you're gonna be blown away. If you wanna use your whole brain, read both. Now you can go to Amazon and pay 20 bucks and another 10 bucks in shipping and handling. If you do, thank you, but I'll gift you a copy for free. You simply go to laserfund.com or click on the link below. You contribute a nominal amount towards the shipping and handling. I require a little bit of skin in the game, but I will cover the rest of that cost and I will pay for the book. I will fire, fire out a hard copy to you via priority mail. When you're in there claiming your free copy, uh, check out the audio and video formats if you like to listen and learn and watch and learn. Uh, there's also educational webinars we teach on a regular basis, they're free. But you can even schedule an appointment to talk to an IUL professional that knows how to do this correctly at no cost or obligation. Because this is not about me, this is about you and your brighter future. And so I want you to do it the smart way because I just cringe when I see people doing it the dumb way. Don't make that mistake.